Today I'm at Oxwich National Nature Reserve, an area which I really love because we've got this incredible diversity of habitats. We've got the sand dunes, we've got the beach, we've got the stunning coastline, but we've also got the woodlands, the wet woodlands, the marshlands. Already I've seen a variety of wildlife, including the small blue butterfly and also swifts ahead. But today I'm focusing on a particular feature of this area, which is of course the sand dune ecosystem. I'm on my way to meet Pippa and Hannah from Natural Resources Wales and Plant Life, who are the core partners in the Dynamic Dunescape project delivery. I'm meeting with them to learn more about the Dynamic Dunescapes as a project and more about this wonderful reserve. Pippa, it's fantastic to have you on Gower Watch today. Thanks yeah. so much for coming on to the show. What I want to know is more about the reserve and what makes it so special. Sand dune sites across our coast um, provide coastal protection and the sand dune system itself is special because it provides shelter for other habitats we've got in the reserves. But then secondly, the, the dune system itself is so dynamic and that's what's special about the sand dunes is it provides habitat for many rare, special and fascinating wildlife. And then thirdly, it's an open access space for people to come and enjoy. So what are your standouts at the reserve? So we've got the early purple and um, marsh orchid coming out. Um, and there's the common, common spotted orchid and the beautiful little bee orchid, which hopefully yeah. you get to see later in the summer. And all these floral species support a high level of invertebrate species that we've got. So there's many uh, butterfly species that we can see. Today we've seen the kidney vetch and the small blue flying around. Um, and if you, in sort of some of the longer sward grass areas, you can see the funnel sort of spider webs for the labyrinth spider. And then mammals, well, we've got a breeding population of otter. And of course we've got the different um, bird species. We've seen greater spotted woodpecker and we've got green woodpecker. Um, often in the summer you'll see meadow pipit and skylark high up in the sky doing their song yeah. and sometimes kestrel foraging. Sand dunes aren't static habitats on our coast. They're constantly moving and shifting and changing. They are dynamic ecosystems and they actually go through a life cycle, as you know. So can you tell us a bit more about that life cycle and how sand dunes are actually formed? It starts in the sea with the sea pushing the sediment up to the coast and the sand and then the wind blowing in. And small ridges are formed in embryonic dunes at the, at the very front of dunes. And the more exposed the site is and the more wind there is will be the bigger dunes you get. To ensure that they stay favourable for that wildlife and to ensure that they're protected and resilient for the future actually involves your team managing the sand dunes. The three main things that we do um, are with scrub encroachment, trying to keep the scrub out of the dunes and the dune slacks, which are the dips um, behind the frontal dunes we got here. Um, we have grazing on site, so we've got ponies. We, in the summer, do something called bracken bruising, which is we have a machine come in and bend the bracken to stop it from growing back. But then the Dynamic Dunescapes project that's operating here at Ox, which is part of a heritage lottery funded project, and that's enabled us to do some additional work. And one of them is creating a notch, which you can see, sort yep. of see behind, is um, it's an artificial blowout. And then it allows the sand to come in and blow around the reserve and the slacks and keep the nutrient level poor, which is what a lot of the floral species like and need in sand dunes. And the final piece of work that we're doing this year and next is helping the rabbit population. And so the management that we're going to do this year, instead of releasing more rabbits, it's actually helping the existing population by creating brush piles near their burrows or a few artificial warrens can help uh, their breeding succeed and the population expand again. So has Oxwich changed over the years? If you go back in time and you can see aerials from say the 1940s, the site was actually used as a military training area so there was lots of bear sand and the site was almost devastated in some areas. But it's by the 1960s the site was designated and over 550 floral species were, were seen. Management that we do annually and through Dynamic Dunescape is trying to reverse some of that and just keep the dunes dynamic. We've got so many community members here and really passionate individuals and conservationists that want to get involved in a project like this one. So how can the community get involved? 
there is a dedicated volunteer group that you can register with on the Natural Resources Wales website. Um, and they do site maintenance, site management, and they've actually helped a lot with some of the fence line work that's been going on. Throughout the year, we've got various guided walks and also some skills sessions where people can learn about the environment. Some of the biggest events happening this year are actually World Sand Dune Day, and there'll be lots of events going on all over the place. So within the project of Dynamic Dunescapes, there's actually 12 project sites. There's all kinds of training events happening where you can get involved with volunteering. That can be from helping out with site management all the way through to monitoring wildlife. So that might be bumblebees, butterflies, reptiles, all kind of different things going on with local community groups and local partners and all of those events we share on our social media and they're also listed on the Dynamic Dunescapes website. You can come as a visitor and you can get involved and take some fixed point photography within our citizen science project but then you could go back to somewhere near where you live and get involved with a Dunescapes project there so there's actually 34 project sites and again they're all with different organisations from the Wildlife Trust through to the National Trust, Plant Life where I'm from and also the Natural Resources Wales and Natural England as well. There's resources online if you want to do the John Muir Award and there's ideas for activities you can do there and a young person's bursary here in Wales that's a £500 bursary for people aged 18 to 30. I mean our biggest thing is we just want people to to get out in the dunes and have a nice day really. It's been an absolutely wonderful day here on Oxwich and we've seen such a variety of wildlife in just one afternoon here. And it's been great to hear from the Dynamic Dunescapes project team about the important work that they are doing to look after this invaluable sand dune ecosystem for the future and ensure it's protected. So next time you're at Oxwich, take a walk over the sand dunes and explore the diversity we have right here on our doorstep. <laughs>